Meanwhile, the West Australian government has unveiled its post-lockdown transition plan. Joining me now live is the WA opposition leader, Zach Kirkup. Zach, we heard from the health minister earlier revealing that there are no new community transmission cases uh, again today, which means that WA is likely on track to exit lockdown at 6pm local time today. We know things certainly won't be going back to normal, but do you support the post-lockdown transition plan? Uh, absolutely do. And it's important that we can uh, provide that level of certainty to businesses and to families about what they should expect over the coming days through to effectively Valentine's Day here in Western Australia. Uh, unfortunately, there's been a lot of confusion about what's happened. There's obviously been a very significant failure in our hotel quarantine system here that has meant that we've had to enter this five-day lockdown, but all of us are very relieved that we're getting out of this. Now it's going to be a staged approach on the way out, and the Liberal Party supports anything uh, that we can do to help keep West Australians safe. And that has been informed by the Chief Health Officer. We're looking now at five days in a row of no community transmission in the state. You supported the lockdown from the beginning. Do you still think it was the right approach or an overreaction based on one case? No, in, in Western Australia, we have been obviously uh, very lucky with respect to what's happened. We're obviously very isolated in our state and we haven't seen an outbreak because of uh, the restrictions that have been put in place in that respect. So we absolutely supported the lockdown because as a Liberal Party, the first policy I announced when I became leader was that we were back in the Chief Health Officer's advice 100% of the way. So if that's what the Chief Health Officer said was required, then I think it's important. Uh, we wanted it to be a short, sharp lockdown. And so now that we've got through these five days, we want to get out of that as quickly as possible. Unfortunately, though, we've had a significant impact on our small family businesses here. Uh, those cafes, those restaurants, who, a lot of other traders who can't continue their business for this time, who were shut down with four hours notice. We want to see some more support for those small businesses because they're the lifeblood here in WA. And without that, particularly in the Perth and Peel region, it's a, it's a big concern if they're not going to get that support that they need. You mentioned that Western Australia is quite isolated and obviously in 10 months there hasn't been one case up until the last week. What are your thoughts on the way that COVID has been handled? How would you have handled the situation if you were in government? Well, we'd continue to follow the Chief Health Officer's advice. That's the reality. It's the advice of Chief Health Officers across the country that have helped keep us safe. We need to implement it. We, we'd be far more accountable in how we do that. Over here in WA, we very rarely get the Chief Health Officer fronting press conferences and talking to journalists and the people of our state about the restrictions and answering any questions. Uh, yesterday, I asked for a briefing from the Chief Health Officer uh, and didn't get the chance. It was I got the Police Commissioner, uh, but not the Chief Health Officer. Now, Richard, he was very busy, but we don't see the Chief Health Officer out as much as we would like. So from a government, the Liberal Party would make sure that uh, we'd not only follow the Chief Health Officer's advice, but we'd also make sure there's much more accountability and transparency and that support for those businesses that have been affected. WA is the only state who, have, uh, who hasn't rolled out some support for small businesses. I've just You crossed live from Queensland there. The Queensland government's provided two rounds of support for small businesses that have been affected by lockdowns and the like. We're still waiting to see a dollar uh, over here at WA businesses. The hotel quarantine system as a whole has really been in the spotlight this week with the outbreak in Perth and, of course, in recent days in Melbourne. National Cabinet, the Prime Minister there just saying that uh, hotel quarantine is here to stay. Do you think that it's time for the federal government to contribute to the program and look at alternative arrangements? Well, I think the reality is we're going to be dealing with this for some time. So we need to make sure that there is a a clear understanding about what to expect from hotel quarantine to make sure we continue to learn. In WA, we were the most prepared government, we should have been the most prepared government of any across the country because we've gone so long without there being any outbreak and we should have learned the lessons from Victoria. Uh, the reality is the hotel quarantine system here failed. Uh, we saw and only found out a couple of days ago that actually the hotel security guard on the same floor as a COVID patient who gave him who transmitted this virus wasn't wearing the mask. So we still have a lot of, and there's no ban on second jobs here either, unlike in Victoria. So in WA, there's still a lot more we can do to help keep people safe. 
I think the Prime Minister's leadership on this has been fantastic, and I think now making sure that we do set expectations about how we need to deal with this in the future. The federal government has done a great job in terms of the national approach, but ultimately, over here in WA, I think it's important for the WA government to look after our quarantine arrangements as best as possible, particularly because we are so spread out. WA in Perth, we need to make sure that they're the closest to hospitals in case something goes wrong. So we need to make sure that the hotel quarantine system still operates, I think, out of the city mm. and make sure that we have the best possible understanding about how to implement the appropriate measures. And we'll continue to learn from other states. We unfortunately found that we haven't been paying attention to those other states about the improvements that could have been made. It's certainly been a very busy week in Western Australia, but it's about to get, of course, even busier. Zach Kirkup with the WA election now only about five weeks away. You suspended the campaign this week due to the COVID situation. Has it at all put your campaign back a notch? I think everyone's been focused on the health situation here. And ultimately, uh, we're very comfortable with the idea that we should be focusing on helping to keep people safe in Western Australia. We've offered to work very constructively with the government in a unity ticket effectively to follow and implement the Chief Health Officer's advice. So even as we enter a caretaker, if that means that we decisions that need to be made that would bind the future government, we're in support of anything that can be done to help keep people safe. Uh, now we are, I think it's 36 days away from the election. It's obviously a challenge, uh, but more than anything, as the Liberal Party, we just want to help keep people safe. And that's the most important thing that we can focus on. Now, thankfully, we've got out of this lockdown, let's hope we start seeing support for small businesses, which is what we continue to call for. Let's hope we get out of this so we don't have to continue wearing masks past Valentine's Day. Mm. Uh, but we'll continue to, to work very hard to make sure we get out there and talk to our communities. Everyone's going through this together here in the Perth and Peel, and irrespective of the fact that we're in the middle of a campaign. All I want to do is make sure that we can help keep people safe. And, and what does what does a government look like under Zach Kirkup? If you're elected in, in five weeks' time, what does that look like for the community of Western Australia? Well, it's a, it's a bigger, better, brighter future. And right now, there is no plan from the Labor Party about what uh, post-pandemic looks like. I suspect they want to continue to uh, really campaign on what's happened and make this a, much more about a, a gratitude vote. But the reality is that people in WA uh, couldn't really tell you what this Labor government has done outside of the pandemic. For us in the Liberal Party, we're setting very ambitious jobs targets, a very, very bold plan to make sure that we recruit 1,200 new police officers here, making sure that we're the lowest taxing state of any in the country for small businesses, and making sure that we have a really clear vision for our state's diversified economy into the future. We've got great opportunities here in Western Australia and we need to seize on them right now, not only for the next term of government, the next four years, but for the decades to come. So really this is about choosing a party that has a plan and a vision for the long term of Western Australia versus the Labor Party who don't want you to think about the future. They want you to think about only what's happened in the last one year, not the last four, because they haven't delivered on very much. And they continue to have issues that haven't been addressed with record levels of ambulance gridlock, record levels of violent crime, nearly 100,000 people who are still unemployed, a homelessness crisis here in our state, spiralling rates of family and domestic violence and mental health crisis. So a lot of issues that go unaddressed by this government versus the Liberal Party, who's got a very clear plan for what the future of our state looks like. And that's the difference. Hope and vision for our future versus the Labor Party who wants to continue business as usual. Zach Kirkup, that's all we have time for. Thank you for joining me. Thanks, Senator.